It's been October, the spookiest of all the months, but which board games have given us the chills? Hi, I'm Julian and this is Libby and we are Box Meeples. You've already found us here on YouTube, but why not talk to us on Instagram and Twitter? So today we are going to go through all the new board games, new and notable board games that we've played in October, which is a big month for you because you went to go to Essen. I did go to Essen. I mean, not for the full full time period, so I had to cram a lot in. So there was quite a lot of games there that it would have been nice to have played that I didn't manage to, but I did get to see quite a few that I was really interested well, in. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Essen feels like, from what I've, you told me and from what I've seen, less like a uh, chance to play many, many games you do at UK Games Expo because there's so many more people there. Yes, I did find, although it was brilliant to be there, um, I, it was actually nice when some of the um, creators uh, took bookings because then you could sort of set a time, come back and know you were going to get to play. Um, but there were others that don't do that, so you're sort of hanging around hoping someone finishes and then you're going to get a chance to sit down and you think, oh, I'll just go and have a quick wander to that stand whilst they're finishing, you come back to someone else and sat at that table. So <laughs> I, I did feel like you kind of spend a lot of time wandering around hoping to get to a game mm. a little bit more. Um, and you yes, did spend a lot of time kind of at the developers' tables, you know, the, the prototype games, which did suck up a lot of your time, which yeah. you're not going to talk about because obviously it wouldn't be fair to, to talk about games in these early stages. Yeah. Um, that did suck up a lot of your time, where the bigger titles, where the queues were and the crowds were, you didn't necessarily get a chance to get to, but you played a th few. I did, I did get to play quite a few, so uh, we'll start our way through October. And the first new one on the list is actually the last game I played at Essen before we had to go home. And we picked up, it was one of those places where they had loads of chairs and tables out and you sort of go into the little library and pick up something you want, take it to the table and play, which is also a great mm -hmm. idea. That works really well. And the table, the, mm, not the table. <laughs> <laughs> the table, you weren't playing Crokinole, No, I wasn't, I wasn't. The game that my friend picked out was Dungeons, Dice and Danger. Mm -hmm. Neither of us had heard of it before. And it's actually really quite fun he ended up buying it um and it's kind of like a roll and write but it's also a dungeon crawler okay <laughs> so you're kind of rolling the dice to know sort of what number you can sort of activate and you're trying to work your way through to these sort of creatures that you need to defeat and then roll the correct numbers in order to sort of activate the hits on them and things as well. And then it, obviously if you roll a number that you can't move to, because you need to move to somewhere next door to the you've already been, unless it's a starting space, then you'll sort of take a hit or some some you can go and open up treasure chests mm -hmm. and get some extra bonuses and things. Um, so if you're into roll and write, that was actually really fun. And it has a few different sides with different types of creatures, different levels. To I'm finding, explore. I find they're doing lots of kind of interesting things with, with roll and writes now. It's, it's, yeah. They used to be, you know, a bit similar to each other, but now they're kind of exploring loads of different genres and loads of different depths of games. So yeah. it's a, it's really interesting kind of emerging style of play. Which I, yeah, because we exciting. really like the what the Dinosaur Island yeah. one as well. That does some different things too. Um, but sort of, I ended up just adding on to my Kickstarter of a dinosaur world, mm. thinking, oh sure, just may as well. Just put that but, one um, in for a penny, in for a pound doesn't really affect the postage. <laughs> but yeah, it's just um, been a game we play quite a bit. Yeah, so I really liked that. That was fun. Yeah, and I'm hoping it to we get to play it with our friend again. Not good. Um, I also played. He's a game designer and was there looking at um, options for his Kickstarter in the future and things. And one of his games, um, I played that a couple of times, Giza, but it's not a published game, so we won't sort of we'll be talking harp about on it, about that quite a lot at some point <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Who cause... knows? Or one of his other games, depending mm. on which one he he chooses to go for. Um, played a few that we have spoken about before i think we've spoken about our love for marvel dice throwing we have I, I think we so. have covered that a few times <laughs> but yeah it's been and we've been introducing that to new people as well um because it's so quick to kind of explain and yeah. yeah it's been it's been increasingly popular amongst our gaming circle yeah and so. i i i did on my birthday managed to 
uh, to win after a, a couple of margaritas. So yeah. good gameplay. Good works for that. <laughs> uh, I, I, we need to get some more characters now because we've explored all the, the base characters. Yeah, so. now we want some, some of the others. Yeah, for sure. One that we picked up um, whilst we were on our holidays in September, mm-hmm. um, sort of reminiscence of Mexico and things, but we did actually get it from our friend in LA, um, is Skull. Yes. And we've played that at a couple of different play accounts, which was, mm-hmm. was fun. We played it at our gaming group. Um, and it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a fun little game it's, where it's you're a... just trying to bluffing people, I suppose. Uh, that sort of party style game. Yeah, yeah, it's another one where really quick to explain. People think there's not much to this. And then you start thinking about it and, and getting into it. And you start really getting a bit tactical. And it's a lot of bluffing and almost kind of creating patterns of play. You know, always, okay, for these ones, I'm always going to play the flower cards and then people are going to suspect I've I've played a flower card. And there's so many levels that it begins to work on, particularly when you play repeatedly with the same people. Yeah. Um, You're really enjoying it. You start sort of second guessing each other and things. Um, One that isn't new to you, but I had played it for the first time, is this lovely Starship Captains, which almost made my game of the month um, this month. But because I have done some content on it and I know that we have more content coming up and it was your game of the month yes. in June. Uh, I, yeah, I, I played it at Ex- for the, the UK, UK Games Expo. Expo. I absolutely loved it. We can't, um, I can't say enough good things about Starship. We've no. mentioned it a few times. I think I said it for my favourite game, Fired, when I said what game yeah. sums up all your tastes in one. Yeah, so just because we have mentioned it quite a few times, that was the only reason that it sort of didn't, um, but they got pipped to the post, I suppose, in sort of ish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I've played that a couple of times now. We played it as a two. We also took it to our gaming group and played it as a four. Mm-hmm. And yeah, both of those actually really like both. both um, I'm so accounts. pleased you finally got a chance to play it because you couldn't play it at the UK Games Expo. Um, and I was I was going on about it, and, and at the time you were just meant to kind of drop me off and then go and explore. But you sat through a whole game, just not even playing it. And I'm so pleased you finally got to play it and seen all the fun this I like about it. Yeah, I've been saying all along. Oh, you know a game is good if you're willing to sit there and watch someone else play it when you could be going off and exploring the halls. But um, yeah, it, it intrigued me then, and it's just um, yeah a brilliant game. And the end production values, chef's kiss. <laughs> I mean, the player boards, with the folding over and creating double layer player boards, is superb. Yeah, and so I love good. the little ships. One thing I really love about this game is that sort of selection of your different um, crew that you've mm-hmm. got. And you're pushing them around at the end of the round and leaving a few there. So then the colours that you've got left to work with in your pool um, allow you to do slightly different actions. You've got to sort of plan accordingly to that, which is is great. And I also love how they've done different sculpts, mm-hmm. but there's like a varied amount in everyone's box. So everyone might have different, yeah. like men, women, aliens, of different colours, all different combinations yeah. of them. And that's, that's, that's it's, fun, it's I like such, that. It's such a good game. Yeah, love that. So the next one, which technically isn't new to you, but is to me, and is also on our, um, we're doing a scratch off poster, which we'll probably discuss more We've in the future. We've got to the point of being able to define and discuss it after two years. <laughs> um, and it's the 100 ball games that you should play and you're sort of scratching each one off we go and it's, this is on that. And we played it recently. Um, a friend taught it to us, Blood Bowl. Oh, of course. I, I couldn't, I couldn't you weren't out. sure what that was going to be, were you? Was, no. Yeah, and actually, um, actually, it was quite fun. I mean, turns out if you're great at rolling 10s and 12s, you do pretty yeah. well. I played it a lot at school. It used to be at our... Um, we used to have War Games Club at school. And we used to play Warhammer. Uh, I think it's now called Age of Sigma. I'm ageing myself here. <laughs> we had 40k. Uh, and we had Blood Bowl. Um, and we played Blood Bowl quite a lot because it's quite good. We had a rule. You had to have all your army painted. So that didn't really work. But Blood Bowl, you only had to paint 12 or 7 if you're playing 7s. 7s, yeah. Um, so that worked really well, and I played it quite a lot. I'd completely forgotten it all. Uh, I knew the kind of basics. <laughs> to my of... advantage. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and lots of things I thought were there have new names, or it's it's streamlined. It's still quite complicated, and there's a lot going on that I think people dismiss. Um, but it's, it was really fun to play it again. I'd kind of forgotten how much I enjoy it. So yeah. I want to play yeah. again. Um but really enjoyed it, and I'm yeah, pleased you did. Interesting to get more of a grip on the different types of teams and how they sort of, yeah, sort of fare up against the one that I. Yeah, because you thrashed and... me. I did a little 
Is it he, was like uh, three, nil. three nil. It was not even close. Um, okay. I wasn't used to playing with the. And I'm not. It's not an excuse. I, I used to play Wood Elves, and I was playing uh, Black Orcs, a new new team. I didn't think you knew. I don't even remember what I was playing. You playing they, undead? They were beastly. And um, yeah, and I, 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 I was just taking too many risks. Uh, I made some schoolboy errors. I was a poor team manager because um, <laughs> I. It's what I hadn't realised or I'd forgotten was it's all about when do you when do you do the risky moves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I was just doing those way too early and leaving myself at the open. But I, you know, all credit to you, completely destroyed me. Great at rolling tens. <laughs> but we had a lot. We did have a lot of fun doing that. Um, another game that I was dying to play at Essen and managed to do so is a game that we've got on order. Um, didn't kickstarter it because of the sort of costs involved with postage and things like that. It's but been we a have... big consideration now. The postage costs of the UK are making games almost kind of prohibitively expensive for us. Yeah, and and I think that when it was on, I was feeling particularly poor. So <laughs> even though I really love the look of it, so we've ended up. Uh, pre-ordering a Kickstarter version from one of our friendly local game stores so I'm hoping that that will be with us mm -hmm. soon but the game is Endless Winter a lot of people are excited Leo about Americans. it yes it's some of the things that we really enjoy you've got that sort of deck building you've got people placement there's there's several things going on and I really like that sort of hybrid style of game where you're thinking about oh could I do that should I do that oh yes I'll think about this and there's lots of different elements well the the reason i think it's a we're going to like it is because i saw a board game co video trying to pick the best one between arnak dune imperium and this yeah and, and a lot of people the, compare them i'm not sure well, i don't mind that i do because why? i well, arnak and <clears throat> dune imperium are games i really love so having yes. another one that's doing a similar thing with some different tweaks we're going to like it yeah well that was my worry that a lot of people were comparing them mm -hmm. and I thought oh well do we need a third game that does the same thing when we do already love the two that we have yeah and they feel different to me we so do. we pull them off the shelf for different times different reasons if we were to have a third one would all three get taken off the shelf or was is one or two of them always going to be preference to the third and I didn't want to make one game sort of null and void per se so I wanted to make sure yeah. they did do something different and I do feel like it has a completely different vibe and stuff going on so I am pleased Great. that we have this coming yeah really enjoyed it looking forward, I'm to, looking it. forward to doing more stuff about it when it arrives yeah it's gonna be good yes that was that was great um I mean, it's not new to me, but I played The Great Wall again. It was <laughs> super exciting. Um, again, can't wait for the, I backed the reprint of that, so yeah. I'm excited for that to come. But we have spoken about that yes. before, so and I won't delve in too much. It's but... very exciting how you always gravitate to it. <laughs> if someone's saying, we're going to play Great Wall, would I? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I, I was supposed to be playing something else that yes. night. And then... It's fine, because it was four players, and someone else really wanted to play the game that I played. Mm. Uh, so I played Power Rangers... Uh, it's Power Rangers, something about the void. Don't ask me. It's a Power Rangers game, and I know nothing about Power Rangers. Me either. Whatsoever. And as we were playing it, uh, they were showing me clips of... Because some of the people I was playing with were slightly younger than me, and they grew up watching Power Rangers. I'd never seen an episode. I knew what it was. Yeah, but yeah. I'd never I've watched seen toys in a shop. It's brilliant. In a this is awful way, <laughs> it's absolutely bonkers. I don't. Know, I'm sure it's much better now. But the original series of the Japanese kind of robots mixed in with Americans doing different scenes. They're showing me some clips. It's just bonkers in a brilliant way. But the game itself is quite good. Uh, I enjoyed it more than some of the other people around the table. Uh, it's a kind of co-op game where you are fighting against Power Rangers enemies uh, using your unique skills, and and you have to kind of decide who goes where on the board now the one flaw that was kind of leveled at it was whoever shouts the loudest gets the do the action right and i think if it was a bit more you take a turn you take a turn you take a turn it would have been more enjoyable for other people but i really i really enjoyed it mm. uh, it helped that i had a character that immediately did a, a, a hit in battle nice. which meant that everyone wanted me to be involved in their battle mm. so i felt always quite involved in the game but i can see there might be a bit of kind of quarterbacking going on in it. But I've said already I want to play it again on the harder mode. Okay. Uh, and what's great about it, and this is one of the things about playing in person on an actual table, 
is if someone's really excited about a game, their enthusiasm becomes really infectious. Yeah. And you just see someone really enjoying finally getting a game they might have had for a long time to the table. And it just feels really just just fun just just nice to be immersed in enthusiasm for playing it um and that often i think carries a game that wouldn't necessarily be my choice yeah but it just elevates it a little bit lovely um what else oh another one whilst i was at edison i played days of wonder heat pedal to the metal Mm -hmm. um with my friend and several other people that we'd not met before it's a racing game as it sounds sort of that formula one kind of style um i won (laughs) (laughs) um for me i thought it did some interesting things with the card play and how you sort of change up gear or down gear cooling down and they sort of can get a bit stuck with your cards and things and so um some people sort of went around the corners too fast and ended up not being able to slow down enough and they got sort of a bit a bit stuck a bit hampered and, okay. and managing that card sort of element was actually quite interesting for me i think we've played other racing I games say it sounds, sounds like formula day but i think a bit more streamlined perhaps um a bit simpler yeah and and there's another one that we've played another racing one and and they're all kind of on a par to me i do like a racing style game but i don't and i mean and and i I quite enjoy watching formula one so i should probably like them more um but they're not games that i necessarily always gravitate to i find they're more fun when it's dodo first riding dinos yes when it's a silly element yes and it's not too because a game that's driven by dice rolling and luck is more fun and more kind of oh i'm really ruining this game because i rolled a one when there's all sorts of nonsense going on and you kind of get the racing experience from that yeah um yeah for, for, for me if 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 someone was to say well take one of these two games um dodo's running dinos or heat i i would add to the collection the dinos i mean you know, I love a dino. <laughs> but just because of that silliness, you've still got some interesting card play with that. You've got some weird dexterity rolls yes. and stuff to be doing. Um, so that one's just a lot of fun and silliness. And I think the kind of situation that I would play a racing game You're not going to be playing it. That it's going to be a group, wouldn't... isn't it? We're not going to play it one versus one. No, and if we're having like a big gaming night or something, we're probably not going to do a racing game. It's going to be more of a sort of fun gathering. After sort of some thing. adult drinks, dodos versus dinos. Or getting or no adult drinks and then children involved or that slightly older work. children. Yeah, um, that would be good. So yeah, I did enjoy it, but not one fuss. Not sure if it's going to add to the collection. Yeah, that's um, what's good about testing games. You know, trying different things and and yeah. pushing the boundaries, trying something new you didn't think you might like. You're not going to like every game, and that's fine. Yeah, and, and, and we were at the S and it was one that my friend had thought, oh, I like it, uh, racing mm-hmm. games, I'll see. I'd said um, that I knew that it was out. As we were walking up to the sort of conference centre for the first day, I saw someone with a bag that included that, and they were walking, I mean, literally, we were about to walk in sort of relatively early in the morning, they were already walking out with games <laughs> to their car. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, that's that heat, the new Days of Wonder one. Um, and he was then super interested in that. And I think it was the, the following day that we ended up getting to a table okay. um, because he'd sort of found a space and was like, oh, come and join us at the table. So, um, and it was, it was fun to play. Okay. A good experience. Um, we've played Merchants of Karanor, which is one that we have a Kickstarter video on. So if you're more interested in that, do yep. click the link click and the link. see... I think, I think we're enthusiastic about it. We really enjoyed it and it's on Kickstarter. So yeah, back, have a watch that video and back it if that's your cup of tea. It's a yeah. kind of trading game on a world map. Yeah, I um, I really did enjoy it. Yeah, for that, uh, for that sort of style of um, sort of shorter, not sort of those no. big epic kind of traversing kind of things. And I liked the sort of the sort of way up between the trading between us and also the black market yeah. and being sort of it's, a little bit naughty. It's a pick up and deliver game, but there's a lot of kind of story that goes on in it. And the yeah. more you get involved in that story, the more you can enjoy the game. But yeah, have a watch of our five reasons you can play it. And you know, if it's your kind of game, back it. Story is good. Yes, for sure. Um, next up, Mission Red Planet. Yeah. That was a fun game. I did dreadfully. I thought that I would try to do 
my sort of secret mission. <laughs> and I think there should have been a point when I'd gone, this isn't going to happen. I just need to find it's, points it's from elsewhere. It's not worth very much points either. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was worth quite a those. lot of points, but it ended up being that I did sacrificed everything else in order to <laughs> achieve it. So that was the only points I got was from achieving that mission because it was quite difficult to to do. It's something about those playing cards um, and choosing which that just doesn't click with you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what, how it could be explained clearer to you, but we had the same problem with Libertalia wins the girl quest. Yeah, I, I don't know either. I think, I mean, maybe I, both nights I've ended up zoning out and they've been the same sort of style of thing, but I've misunderstood the rules of the card play um, at the very beginning and then ended up on sort of catch-up further down the line and, and in diff, very different ways with the two yes, games. They're, they're... Um, but I my first turn was completely pointless um because i played a card which would have no effect because you're playing it in the first round yeah because I there's misunderstood no cards to collect what was yes. happening <laughs> um so yeah maybe i just need to pay better attention I, but i, I, I did I, enjoy I, the game i well, enjoyed this one I, I did. Just, i'd never heard of it um i love the art style the kind of steampunk it's not really steampunk it's it's more imagination from the turn of the century of what the future would be like uh similar to discovery land we have in disneyland paris um I really like that kind of art style, and it was it was good. I loved the way you were sort of filling up the little ships, and then you could force one to, yes. to sort of jet off early, and someone else has got a grand plan, and you sort of foiled it with some of the different characters and things. And it's good all the cards are very different, mm. because a game like that, if they're all just a bit similar, a slight tweak, but it felt like all the different characters you can lay behave entirely differently. So yeah. I, I'd play it again. No, I would play it again as well. Yeah, it was fun. never heard of it, and it's nice to have those kind of occasional surprises. Um, next on the list is another SM1. Um, my friend and I played Terracotta Army from Board and Dice. I mean, their stand was absolutely heaving the whole show. They had Tylitum there, which we didn't get a chance to play, but looked great. We had a good look at it, but didn't actually manage to sit at the table. Um, but the um, Terracotta Army was a lot of fun. You're putting out the different statues around and getting different points for how they're placed out and you're trying to get sort of different amounts of clay in order to build the statues and you're choosing from a wheel which you can rotate if you need mm -hmm. to with different actions and things as to what bits you're going to be able to do that turn and you can sort of get the you know, like the grande worker in viticulture. Okay. There's that sort of element. The trump can, worker. Who, yeah. yeah, who can then go to any spot You've got, there's one of those that you can sort of get hold of. There's lots of great things going on and definitely a game that I would like to have another play at. That's, uh, good, that's sort of... I know it was on your radar for a while mm. and uh, you're looking at originally at the Kickstarter but then weren't sure. Um, so I think it's good you've, you've had a chance to play it. And... Yeah, no, I did really enjoy it. Um, and because they were so busy, you're sort of really playing, getting an introduction and then you're playing around rather than like the full game. Um, so you don't necessarily thoroughly get your head around every sort of nuance at that stage and um but enough to but, wet your whistle oh 100 percent, yeah yeah definitely would like to play that again excellent so that was good um and another one that i was super excited about was unconscious mind at fantasia games, yes you've been, you've been that... very excited about this <laughs> uh, since you got back yeah and that that one has um just sort of stuck with stuck with me in my mind. <laughs> um, it it was also on the same stand with the they're the same guys that make Endless Winter. Right. Um, so I ended up um, playing this game prior to Endless Winter, and part of me was thinking, well, gosh, I really I really enjoy this one. This is this is great. I'm looking at Endless Winter. I, I, am I going to be disappointed in, in that <laughs> I've sort of <laughs> I know that I've pre-ordered it. Um, is it going to be able to stand up to to this? But no, I do. I do love very, the very of different places. games. They're very different. Yeah, yeah. I love the the theming, the idea. You're sort of one of Freud's friends, and you're sort of gathering together and having conversations about how best to treat your patients because mm -hmm. the whole sort of ethos or uh, sort of medical workings of sort of psychology are just sort of at their birthplace there. So you're sort of chatting between each other who, who's treated what patient, how, how can you sort of 
get a, a bad dream or a nightmare that someone's having and interpret it and try and help to cure them. And it, It's such yeah. a fascinating topic. I love the idea um, that people are exploring new ideas. I mean, uh, similar to kind of Lacrimosa. It's like, who thought that would make an engaging board game? And who thought, you know, the idea of psychology would be translatable into a board game? I'm really excited to play it. Yeah. It looks, yeah. It looks incredible on the table and I really love the idea. And that was your game of the month. It was, yeah. No, it, and it looks beautiful. The artwork is great. Some of the components, like the little inkwell and you're moving little orbs around and things. And even because you're placing things into a conversation, they're sort of shaped like speech marks mm. which like so the little details i think have been put in there quite carefully and yeah i really i really had a great time playing that one another one that we've only just got to the table having picked it up at the bring and buy at the uk expo <laughs> in june and we're now almost november yeah do you remember that big table of games we've now <laughs> Really played them. I think there's probably still two or three. No, there is a couple that we haven't, um, this one included. Um, But we do have some plans with a friend to to sit down and play that one. That's a bit of a beast, though. Yeah, he's loved some of the predecessors of this one, so he said that we can we can get that to the table sometimes. So yeah, he's he's a good rules explainer as well, which is good because this is heavy. Do you think? Like what I've heard. We'll find out. Um, But the one that we did actually play and get to the table was Valhalla. Um, which actually is a is a fun, yeah, fun good game. It wasn't yeah. the game I expected. I don't think it's a game you expected, but you bought it completely on impulse. Oh, I bought it because by. it was to do with Vikings, and it said Kickstarter edition, and it was a reasonable price. It's a it's a good edition. And I thought, you've got. Hmm, let's see. Um, and it wasn't. I thought it'd be a more of a miniatures game. It's it's a du- a two person dual game. You can play. I think you play it with more. No, I think you can play it with more. Um, we we, we just played, played two. It with two. Yeah. And yeah, uh, we played the absolute stripped out base game. And that was a little bit light for us. But that's no criticism of the game because it literally says only play this if it's your first game. We probably should have gone in a lot deeper mm. because what's great about the Kickstarter version, and that's kind of, I'm pleased you've got that, is just the different components you can then slot into the game to yeah. completely change it. They talk about um, there's a sort of a Loki expansion. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested in that because there's bound to be some mischief going on and, and things like that in there. Um, and there's loads of different cards to be added in yeah. that will add a lot. A lot of variety to it. I mean, there's some miniatures in that box we haven't used yet. Yes. So that's got to be doing something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, really pleased. And it's quick to play. Mm. Yeah, easy to learn, easy to table, nice theme. I quite enjoyed the artwork. Yeah. yeah. I'm pleased you finally played it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we will get it to the table again. I'm, I'm not sure it will make like my top ten or anything. No, but, it's, but I, lo- I it's enjoyed it. It's a solid, it. good game. And it's, we always say this, all oh, talking about it, it makes me want to play it again. <laughs> exactly, that's, that's, exactly. This video is my version of that one. I like to play Valhalla again. <laughs> um, and lastly is a bit of a, a, bit of a strange one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's always a strange one when it's the games that your daughter's chose, isn't it? <laughs> I can guess what it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's what? what? Um, and it, but it's an Animal Crossing. It could have been anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stick Animal Crossing on, they'll play Snap. Uh, yeah. And um, it's apparently a classic British card game that neither of us have ever heard of. No, no. I... Yeah, no clue. And uh, there's basic rules and advanced rules and then additional rules. We played it with all of those rules and it was still a bit chancy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you're trying to kill time in an airport with children who enjoy Animal Crossing, sure. Great. Yeah, they enjoyed it. <laughs> they but did. But tellingly, did. despite the theme, they haven't asked to play it again. Ah. Now, Animal Crossing Monopoly, they did ask to play it again. Yeah. Mine is Mine for size. Five, they can't stop wanting to play. <laughs> but this one, despite the Animal Crossing-ness, I think they'd much rather play a game like Just Desserts, mm-hmm. which is a card game. Go Nuts for Donuts. Go Nuts for Donuts. Mm. Uh, it didn't really grab them. So, yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a damning we'll review, see. despite it having Animal Crossing all over it. Yeah, we'll see. If it didn't have Animal Crossing all over it, they would never want to play it again. But mm, true. You can't win them all, especially <laughs> when you're playing that game because it's mainly luck. <laughs> But that's been our games in yeah, October. That's October games. There'll be some more to come because I had a birthday this month, so there's a few new additions to. Oh, I mean, I've played that before. You haven't, mm-hmm. um, but there is a few new additions and, to uh, the shelves. I've given you a whole other reason to play Ark Nova. 
Oh, you have. I'm excited for that. You'll see that next time. Yeah. Um, and also, we've got they picked up the boards for Arc Nova Essen. I did. So yes. That, that so that's super exciting. Literally any reason to play Arc Nova. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. But uh, yeah. So, what games have you played in October that you really enjoyed, or which games we've talked about? Uh, really strike a chord with you and you go, oh, tell us more about that. Please put a comment below if there's something that's particularly tickled your pickle and you want us to talk about. Yeah, and we would really love it if you would subscribe to the channel and also ring the little bell so you can hear all about our future chats about board games coming up. And uh, you'll see us in November when I'll be trying to come up with a firework related pun for the intro. Stick around for that. <laughs>